Okay, good morning to everyone. Thank you very much for coming. We're now going starting a new, beautiful, miraculous, <clears throat> outstanding week. And God is giving us more time to, uh, to live in this world. Amazing, just simply amazing. The amazing kindness of the creator of the universe. That he's Zonu Mukhar Eastakal, or Melech Ozir, or Mushil Mogain, Metiv Lakal. No words can express it. Mom Tano Mikal Lashon. Here we go. So now we're talking about the spies. Here's an interesting and a very sort of shameful saga and period in the history of Judaism. God took the Jews out of Egypt, amazing miracles, gave them the Torah even greater miracles, told them he's, they're, they're his chosen people. And um, they worshiped the golden calf and he forgave them. And God said, okay, ready? You're all forgiven. You built the whole, the, the, the tabernacle. And now let's go into the land of Israel. And the Jews said, um, good idea. That's, that's a really good idea, you know, but Let's send some scouts in to scout out the place just to give us a little, you know, like a, a tourism pitch. You know, see the beautiful land, the beautiful shores, the trees, the fruits, how friendly the people are over there, and how, you know, conducive and user friendly the whole area is. And so Moses said, okay, that's, that seems like a pretty good idea. You know, so what do you say? Let me ask God. So God said, you want to send the spies? You want to send in surveyors or whatever? Send them in. It's up to you. You want to do it, do it. But, says God, if you ask me, I don't know if it's such a good idea. But on the other hand, I'm giving you an okay. So Moses says, okay. Okay is okay. So he sends the spies in. And they come back 40 days later, and everybody is just waiting with bated breath, and they come back with these big fruits. And everyone says, wow, that's really great. What do you say? And they say, don't do it. Don't go in there. It's dangerous. It's terrible. It's a place of death. It's an awful place. On the other hand, look, here we are in the desert. It's really nice over here. You know, it's nice in the desert. We get fed for free food and sure a little, we can complain all the time and we get free water and there's no enemies. We don't have to fight and we don't have to work. And the best thing we can learn Torah, learn Torah all the time. So everybody said, okay, let's not go in. So Kalev and Yoshua and Kalev there were, those were two of the leaders of the tribes, of the, of the 12 tribes. And so all these people had been the, 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 the chief of their tribes, the, the highest you know, level, had reached the highest level of service of God and everything. And 10 of them came back and said, no way, we're not going in. And two of them said, what are you talking about? It's a nice place. Come on, let, let's go in. And the people said, okay, let's, uh, let's see who the majority are. Here we have one, two, three, that's 10. Okay, that's your opinion. Now let's count, those are the nays. Let's count the yays. Two, 10 against two, we're staying in the desert. That's it. Moses said, I don't believe it. You really, you, are you guys, are you crazy? What are you staying in the desert? This is the whole purpose. You're gonna get that. We got the Torah, we're gonna to go into the Holy Land. We're gonna make it into a whole, this is the promise God promised it to us. We're gonna go in, we're gonna show the world what God is and we're gonna show the world how how wonderful the world is and how great the Jewish people are. And everybody said, Moses, you know, you, you seem pretty, pretty enthusiastic. So you know what? You go in. We're staying out in the desert. Terrible. And God said, if that's the way it's going to be, I mean, what do you fellows want to do? You want to stay in the desert? Yay. Okay, that's what you're going to do. You're going to wander around in the desert for 40 years. None of you are going to see anybody here that's over 20 years old is not going to see the land of Israel. And everyone said, eh, we want to go in now. Oh, we want to go in. God said, too late. And there were a few, there were a bunch of Jews 
It's like they said there were 20,000 Jews or something. That's it. said, okay, we changed our mind. We're going to go in. And God said, listen, don't, don't go in. And they went in and they got killed. And um, their bones laid there in the desert until came along Ezekiel. And he enlivened these dead bones. Those are the dead bones that Ezekiel saw. Ezekiel saw. That was like, you know, 700 years later or something like that. 800 years later. Enlivened all these people. Okay, nevertheless, terrible story, right? Well, we're going to see. If so, why even put this thing in the Torah? Come on, why put it in the Torah? Why not change it a little bit? I don't know, change the history a little bit that, you know, make it the other way around. Everybody said, let's go in. And God said, no, I want you to stay here for 40 years. I don't want you to go on to the, that's the way, that's the way it should have been written in the Bible, huh? You know, cover it off, change a couple of words. The Bible was 3,300 years ago. And that, you know, if you just make a change in the beginning, so it'll just get passed down. That's where the, all, the, all the Bibles in the world are. So it should have said that God said, okay, wander around in the desert for 40 years. And you can send in spies. And the spies came back and they said, oh, we'd like to go in right now. It's such a beautiful place. But if God says to stay in the desert, so we'll do it, whatever God says. Now, why this terrible story that God wanted them to go in and they refused? So we're going to see. And also, what was the reason? Well, I mean, they saw God made these amazing miracles. They really thought that God couldn't control over there in the land of Israel. So well, let's see. Let's have a look. Ready? Here we go. Shlach Lacha Anashim. That's this week's Torah portion. Send people. Inyan Amaragli. What is this idea, this whole topic of these spies that God sent, that Moses sent into the land of Israel, and God said, write this down in the Bible. You have to also realize another thing. The Bible was written before the world was created. So this story somehow or other was there in some sort of form, maybe it was in seed form or mystery form or something spiritual form, but it was there. It was there before the world was created. So obviously, this is something very, very important, what's going on over here. This is very important, <clears throat> that if it was there before the world was created, it means that it's something that's more, if you want to call it, eternal than the world. There must be some sort of a really deep lesson here. Let's see what it is. Shalak l'chan send people, God said, Shalak l'chan Hashim, the Torah said, Israel. God said to Moses, send, you can send. You want to send people to scout out the land of Israel. Let's understand what is this idea of these scouts, these surveyors, whatever they're called, spies. They were all the highest people. They were the leaders of their tribes. They were famous people. They were great, great well-known for their holiness and their integrity. Why didn't they want to go into the land of Israel? But these weren't just selfish people. These were holy, holy people that were totally devoted to God. But Gam also Lahavi, and to understand Mahus Madriga says as well. Also, we have to understand what is this land of Israel? Why was it really so important that the Jews should go into the land of Israel? That God promised the land to Abraham, and he promised it again to Yitzhak, and he promised it again to Jacob, and he promised it again to Moses. Right? He said, I'm going to give you the land, and I appeared to Avram, Mitzvah, and Yaakov, and I, I promised them the land, and now you're going to get the land and the land. What's so important about the land of Israel? Hine, behold, Kasiv, it says, I mean, even more, you can say, listen, after the 10 plagues in Egypt, and especially after the Jews, you know, the, the whole Egyptian army was destroyed at Yam Suf, so the Jews could have gone back to Egypt. Egypt was a nice place. They could have gone, they've been there for so long. They could have gone back to Egypt and make the Egyptians their slaves. Huh? And then little by little, they could take their time, you know, and they could travel to the land of Israel in an orderly way. They wouldn't have got all these problems and troubles. No, God says, you've got to go out, get, take you out of the land of Egypt. You're going to go to the land of Israel. It's going to be immediately, you're going to see what, what's so special about this land of Israel. I mean, it's a land, it's a place like anybody, maybe geographically, you know, strategically, it's on the trade routes or something. <clears throat> no, must be something special, what's called the Holy Land. Let's see. It says, Oh, now we understand. Now we understand. 
says the land that I'm giving you, that I gave to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, this is a land. You want to know why I gave it to you? Because it's a land that's flowing with milk and honey. Huh? Milk and honey. You don't get that every day. Go out into Chicago. You see there's flow, the, the flow that's flowing milk and honey. Says the Rebbe, what do we care if it's flowing milk and honey? Some people don't like milk and they don't like honey. <laughs> that's that's the reason to go. And who wants the land is flowing with milk and honey? Who cares about flowing? Milk and honey. So it's inexpensive. Milk is inexpensive and honey is inexpensive. That's enough of a reason to promise it to Abraham because you're going to get free milk and honey. What's going on? Ah, uh, we have to understand the Hine call a mitzvah, all the commandments, Rubam, Kakulam, Taluya, Davka, thrill. The majority of the commandments, if not all of them, depend on the land of Israel. There's a famous Ramban that he said that all the other the commandments, if they're done outside of Israel, they're not uh, really command. They're like from the rabbis or whatever. The law is not like this Ramban. The, the, the law is not like him. But he was a very, you know, important opinion. And if he says something, then certainly it was true. At some some level, it was true. It comes out that it's not the, that's not the the law. But there are certainly a lot of laws that you can't do unless there is the land of Israel. First of all, the land. The laws of the Holy Temple. Holy Temple is going to be in Israel. But all the agricultural laws, like the laws of Zeroim, of agricultural laws, Kadshim, things of the Holy Temple. <clears throat> in the desert, true, there were sacrifices, but it was only temporary. The permanent holiness was only in the land of Israel. It is written, it says that not on by, by bread alone can a person live. I mean, is that true? It is certainly, it is not true. You, you certainly can. A person can live on bread alone. You have to have water. What do you mean you, the person doesn't live on bread alone? Maybe it means he has to have bread and water. That's not what it means. It means, what does it say? It says, how does a person live? But only on the word of God does a person live. Uh, for people live in the world Word of God. You, 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 you go in a, you eat a sandwich, you're not eating a sandwich, you're eating the Word of God. That's what's keeping you alive. We have to understand the Yitron, Shabalechem, Laran Lechem, Haloa, Adam, Gamkain, Bamimer, Nibra, Kamoshikatu, Basar, Bam, Nase, Adam. We don't live from the bread. We live from the Word of God that's in the bread. That's what keeps us alive, the Word of God. So one second, we all we also have the word of God in us. What a man is Nasa Adam. Man has the word of God inside of him. Why do we need the word of God that's in the bread in order to keep us alive? Why isn't the word of God that's inside of us enough? Lama Adam, why does a person have to get his life from bread? Okay, so from this we can see number one, the importance of physicality in general. From this, we're going to understand what's important about the land of Israel. But <clears throat> so we see man needs bread because bread has the word of God in it. And for some reason, that word of God is better, more nourishing than the word of God, which is inside of us, inside of man. We need the bread. Ah, it's like this. The word of God, which is in all of the mineral, domin, chai mineral, plant, and animal, who inyan, rapach nitsutsin. This is the idea of the 288 sparks. Shenaflu b'shfira takelin that fell in the breaking of the vessels. Huh? Everything in the world that there is, all the food, all the minerals, all the plants, all the animals, everything that a person lives from <clears throat> has a spark of meaning in it, a spark of life. Everything. Where did these sparks come from? When God created the world, he did this. One of the processes of creating the world was called the breaking of the vessels. That was one of the processes in creating the world, right? The world was created from God's speech. Where one step of this process, so God sort of broke. He made this abrupt breakage and change. 
Shvirat Akelin, called the breaking, it was called the breaking of the vessels. God wanted it to be this way. But Adam, who, a man is from what's called Tikkun. Man comes from this level of Tikkun. It's almost like, like a, a painter before he paints. So he has all these colors, right? This, this has got what I what are the four basic colors? I don't even remember. It's what is it like white and blue and huh? something yellow face, red, red, yellow. I think it's red, red and yellow and white and black, huh? Something like that. Any case, these colors are pure. These are pure colors, but they're separate, and <clears throat> they're all separate and broken. So it would be like, let's say, if you could <clears throat> take the, the whole world and reduce it down to its basic letters, let's say, of creation. So it have all these letters, everything would be pure, like the pure colors, but there would be no order. It would be just like taking a book, you know, taking a, a book and cutting up, so there's all these letters and just scattering around like a puzzle. But on the other end, it would be pure. There's all these letters, are they're, 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 it's pure. When you read a book, you don't see the letters, you just see the words. So the whole world was, God made a world, an order, and then he broke this order, like took it all apart. And that's our job. That's called these sparks. And these sparks are, are the, the, what do you call it, units of meaning, of life, which is in every single thing in the world. Everything that exists, exists for some sort of a purpose. Who knows what it is? And this purpose is the spark that keeps it alive. A godly purpose, not a human purpose. Human purposes are like to be famous, to have money, to whatever it is, to get pleasure. Things live for godly purposes. Eventually, we'll live for godly purposes also. That's the idea of the Mashiach. Man is different. An rock does what a rock is supposed to do. A plant does what a plant is supposed to do. An animal does what a man is supposed to do. What man is supposed to do, that's what it's supposed to be. He says, one, that's what our job is to put it all together. <clears throat> eh. So man comes from this, so the whole world then is made from all these sparks, this big jumble of sparks and letters or whatever you want to call it then. The, and, and there's no meaning, there's no purpose in the world. The whole thing is a, it's just a big confusion. And man is put here, ideally, that's also the idea of the Torah. That's called tikkun. Tikkun means to fix up everything and put everything in its proper place. And therefore, Adam therefore, person has to receive his life from the mineral, plant, and animal. Domen Chai Davka specifically. Why Lafisha Shorish Rapach? Because the source of these 288 sparks, and they broke and they subbroke so that it come down to billions and trillions and whatever, and then billions of trillions, times trillions to the second part, to the millionth power, all these sparks in the world. All these sparks, hey, ma'od and nala, because the source of them is very, very high. Like it's explained in another place. So in other words, the purpose of man is to reveal the order and purpose underlying the whole entire creation. And when you do that, then you unleash this amazing energy, uh, like atomic bomb energy for good. Kamoke, and similarly, Indian, you read us in Neshama, the same purpose, why the soul comes down into this world, a shuffle, this low world, who kadei la kafi la sitra achra, is in order to control separateness. Control separateness. To control separateness, which is found in us. A person wants to be separate from God. People don't like to be told what to do. Not only that, that's nature. We're created in such a way that we don't feel God. So that's the way God wants it, right? Just, yeah, that's the way God wants it so that we should defy it. God wants us to defy it. That's the way God wants it. It's like you go to a, whatever is a, a soccer game or something, soccer game, there's only one team playing. That's better. Usually you have a soccer game. They, 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 how many, how many uh, goals do they score? Right, two, five, ten. Here, one, the, the, we have only one team. They can score 3,000 goals. Uh, that's, isn't that much better? He says, no, it's not much better. Why is it not much better? Because if you only have one team, first of all, they don't even have to be trained. They can just do whatever they want. You can bring children out there and say, every time you put a, a ball in the thing, we'll give you a candy. So they can also make the same thing. And number two, it's not interesting. <laughs> it's not interesting. There's no, 
opposition. But the same thing, for some reason, don't ask me why, but Hashem, that's what Hashem decided. Hashem wants that there should be a world and that there should be what's called a sitra akhra, the other side, the opposing team. And God created this opposing team and he wants us to be the home team. That's what we're supposed to be. As it is now, the, the opposing team, they're the home team and we're the intruders. God put us in the world. <clears throat> he put man here last. <clears throat> Nevertheless, our job is that by means of this, when we do what God says and we oppose nature, including our own nature, there is there is this, the glory of God is <clears throat> revealed in all the worlds. Of course, we don't really appreciate it that much because our eyes are still oriented to the other side, Sitra Akhra side. We've got Sitra Akhra eyes. What are we going to do? That's it. So here we have the Rebbe that's telling us what happens. Anytime that you do what God wants, and this requires a lot of things. you got to believe in God, and you have to believe that God gave the Torah, and that God cares, and that God is he's powerful, and he's almighty, and that he's good, and that he'll react to what we do. Said, so, Okay, it's a lot of preposition, presuppositions, but we have to do it. That's it. That's, that's what we'll lose about and in order to do this, you have to overcome a lot of nature. <clears throat> but when you do it, it says the glory of God is spread out over the world, right? It's like it, the home team is winning. Oh, they go crazy. They go with riots in the streets. Here, the home team is winning, right? When we, we're, we're the home team. When we do what God says, we win, we score a goal. Oh, God is really happy. It sounds childish, childish, but on the other hand, that's the fact. That's the fact. We just don't see it. It says in the future, we'll see it. That's the whole idea of this is a type of, a better type of a light which comes from darkness. Better type of light which comes from darkness, right? You have one team on the road, on the, this, no, and there's no doubt who's going to win. <laughs> if there's two teams, there's a little bit of darkness. You're not sure who's going to win. It's the same thing God put us in this world. He's <clears throat> not sure who's going to win. Up to now, all of the uh, sets have been victorious, the, the other side, the Sitra Akhra. Now, when we, every time we make a little <clears throat> victory, <coughs> we score a point, as God is tremendously happy. Well, come on, Derek Marshall, for instance, Garin. For instance, take an example. So that's using the physical world in order to give God pleasure. For instance, planting a seed. Hanizra oil sits in the ground. al my means of the fact that the seed, it, the, 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 was it, the, 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 the disintegrates. And Shenirkov, and it, the seed rots for Nifsad and gets lost and loses its identity in the earth. It wakes up this power of growth afterwards. But Tosafus Rav, Be or etc. If God puts us in the ground, in this world, this terrible place. And when we do what we're supposed to do, it's like a seed in the ground. And all of a sudden grows up something we never would have dreamed would come from our good deeds. You do one simple good deed, you overcome your natural qualities, your natural traits, you appreciate the creator. It's from this amazing defiance that you defy the world, that grows up this amazing blessing where you take a little seed, you never, who would dream such a thing? You take a little seed, you plant it in the ground and all of a sudden it grows up this huge, massive tree with leaves and it gives shade and there's flowers and has a fragrance and there grows apples and there has a nourishment and it's sweet and it's colorful and it's beautiful. And it came from this one colorless seed. Because, well, that's what happens when you do what God wants in this physical, tasteless, <clears throat> they say the lifeless world, wasteland. We talked about this before about in the desert. Like I've been. Now let's explain this. He nay, behold, Eliyahu Omar, <clears throat> Elijah the prophet. He said in Tikuni Zohar, Elijah the prophet. He comes to Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, and he says to him, and what's a book called Tikuni Zohar? Right, there's seventy different explanations on the word Breshit. Says, Ant who the apikas aser tikunim. You God are the. We say this before Shabbos. You God are the one that you emanated ten. What do you want to call ten uh, units? 
call them. But Karina Lan, Esa Sphere, and you call them ten Spherot. Lan Hagabahon Almin, to conduct with them the world's systeming, the worlds that are concealed, that are not revealed. Almin, worlds. Okay, so in order to get into this, we have to get into a little bit of a mystery over here. And the mystery is <clears throat> that good God created the world, let's say. He created the world. So now we got a world and we got God. There's two things. There's God and there's the world, right? No, it's not so. There's still only one thing. All there is is God. Oh, so there's God so I can, you know, whatever I do is okay because it's all God, right? Said, uh, you're right, it's all God, but it's not all okay. So God is not okay, huh? Because the God is not okay. If it's all God and I can do this. No, God gave the Torah. The fact of the matter is, is that God is okay. But God gave the Torah and he said, there's certain things that I get pleasure from and that certain things I don't get pleasure from. But I created the whole business and I'm creating everything. And if you make the worst mistakes in the world, the worst sins, you're not separate from me. It's all godliness. <clears throat> but you can create waves and energy and whatever that you can turn your face from me. So you can like sort of imagine, that's called the Sitra Akra. You can get caught in powers which are against the Torah. Against the Torah. That's the whole trick that the, the Torah. It says, I mean, we're, come on, God really cares about all this stuff. God really cares what we do, that we, you know, you don't eat milk and meat. And yes, he does. And that's called God's spherot. And that's called the mystery of faith. That's what the Zohar, all these Kabbalistic books are talking about. It's called the mystery of faith. That God is totally one and there's nothing except for God. But on the other hand, there is a world, there is a world, but the world, you just finished saying there's nothing except for God. That's right, there is a world. The world does not exist, but it does exist. God is creating it, and it's very important to God. It doesn't exist, but it's very important to God. This makes no sense. That's right, makes no sense, but that's godliness. God, God does not make sense. A little bit, it makes sense. That's why I gave the Bible. The Torah is to make sense, a little bit at least, so we can understand, we can love God, fear God. So it says there's all these hidden worlds, and that's called the ten spherot. The ten spherot, those are ten aspects of God's personality, and with this, he creates everything that there is. And the whole thing is going to roll down into this physical low world, right, and the land of Israel, and what happens in the, in the world, the physical rocks and plants and animals and what we do with them. We're going to see. But meanwhile, we're in the middle. We have God, the creator, and then we have what's called God's personality, his ten spherot. And with these ten spherot, he creates worlds. Worlds. All these worlds that all the, the other religions believe in. Going to heaven and this type of heaven, that type of heaven. <coughs> Hell, all these. These are all creations, but God creates them <coughs> with his personality. Almin, this is worlds. Worlds. Almin. The word almin comes from the word Ha'elem, concealment. Same letters. Al ayin lamid mem. The Nikra Bezoar, this is called in the book the Zohar. The Zohar was written by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. They're also called, sometimes they're called worlds, sometimes they're called Hechalot. They're called chambers, palaces. Hechalaz Chesed says the chamber of kindness, the chamber of Gavura the chamber of zechut, of merit, ubetocham nishamot, and in these worlds, or these chambers, if you want to call it, or whatever, in other words, these creations, these spiritual creations, there are souls. And these souls, nehanin, they get pleasure from the ziva shechina. They're souls, they're alive, and because they're alive, so they get pleasure from life. But that's what, right? Malachim and the angels, there used to be this person, in, uh, I, I just always remember in Kfar Chabad, there used to be a milk farm, a milk farm. It was a feathered fellow, <coughs> he had like 20 cows, milk cows. And it, it was a big stall, he had a big stall, his backyard was you know, big. And they used to sort of wallow around, slush around over there in the stall, do nothing. When it came time to feed, to eat, so he would make a sound or something. I don't remember what it was, ring a bell. And if he would just ring this bell, all of a sudden all the cows would ring a bell, all these cows, massive cow is a big thing, you know, a cow, how much does a cow weigh? A, a half a ton, a ton, I don't know. They would all stand up and they would all walk, right, to the, 
<laughs> to this little opening and he would let them in one at a time and he would lead, each one would have its place and he would attach these milkers, you know, automatic milkers, milking machines on them while they ate, they ate. So in other words, for food, these cows all of a sudden, and they just stood up and they like hypnotized, they walked and they, well, that's what the angels are. The angels are up there, they're getting pleasure and the souls in, in heaven, they get pleasure from the ziva shchid. That's their food, that's their life. And that's what they're, they're, point, they're, they're pointed at all the time, like these cows. But Malachim, there's also angels up there. Sha'omdim ba'ava, they're standing in love. Be'yir and fear, pachad and trepidation. Kamo machan and mechoyal, like it says, there's the camp of the angel Michael, mechoyal. That's love, the camp of the angel Gabriel. This is fear, pachad. Kamayim rezal, like it says, nahar dinor. Yotze miziyatan shel chayot. It says there's the river of fire that comes from the sweat of these angels that are called chayot, chayot kodesh. <clears throat> what does it mean? That they're loving God, they're the loving God, the life force and the, the, the extra, I say the, 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 the extra life which they get from this, right? And the energy that they expend, so it comes out that it's called sweat, and this sweat makes this river of fire. Which, by the way, this river of fire, it says, is what the, the souls go through in order to go from one world to the next. Anyway, that's what it says. You think I understand this? That's what, but that's what it says. That's what it says in the books. That up in heaven, that there's this, what's called, it's called, the, the, there's an amud, there's a pillar of light that draws the souls from one level to the other, but in order to do that, they have, that's good. That, that's going from one level of good to the next. But in order to do that, you got to go to this river of fire, Nar Dinor. <clears throat> so I don't know, I guess maybe that's something like hell. Is... Anyway, let's not go too much into this. Only the Shira, the angels are up there and they're singing songs. We, remember, we just learned a couple of weeks ago in, in the Haftorah of uh, Shvuot with the prophecy of Yechezkel, where he saw these uh, angels all screaming up and Shira, they say, each angel according to his comprehension, the, 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 the comprehension, and this world or this chamber or palace, whatever called, this is a general category, which is in each, all the, which includes all the details which are in this particular world or aspect or chamber or spiritual. It says, for instance, the Baal Shem Tov went up to the chamber of Mashiach. He saw the Mashiach and he said, Mashiach, when are you going to come? There's these different changer, chambers. Kamo Hechel Chesed, like the chamber of kindness. Kalaluso is Chesed. Everything up there is kindness. But Pratiuso to Betocha, and everything is, is Chachma and Chesed, is Chachma of Chesed and Chesed Jebe Chesed. And it was all the, every single world, like the world of kindness, for instance. It says that's the aspect of kindness. So each world has is composed of the other 10 aspects. Something like we had in Sfirot Omer. Okay, call as a spirit. The call as a spirit. And all the, it's a, it has it, all the other as a spirit. The commercial, like it says, an eagle. Like a eagle. Like a circle. Or buy it. Or like a house. Shekololim kolapratim shebetoho. Which includes everything inside of it. Like a general category. Okay, why is the Rebbe talking about all this? Why is he talking? How did he get into this talking about? It? He's talking about the physical world. In order to understand the physical world, we have to understand what's between this physical world and the cre the creation and the creator. It says you, it's more complicated you can ever believe, more amazing than the mind can possibly conceive of. Even one angel, it says a person would see an angel, he dies, and there's in, in, there's in so far, unlimited numbers of angels. And that's just the angels of this world. Okay. There's different worlds. Of the... That's what it means that God, you made these 10 spheroth in order to conduct the worlds with. <clears throat> these are the level of these chambers, <clears throat> these general levels which include everything in them, and to conduct all of the details which are in them. But nevertheless, all these chambers and worlds where these angels and things like that, they conceal and hide the light of God. That it should not be revealed to them too much. 
only according to their understanding, so they should not be totally burned up by Ein Sof, by the infinite light of God, because all of these angels and souls and spirits and things like that, they're all limited creations from something to nothing. It's not like the something, that our something, but it's still a something, it's a, a thing, you can call it a name, the angels. The anal be'er of Moses, all these angels and the world to come and the Gan Eden and heaven, it's not, it's incomparable <coughs> to Ein Sof Baruch Hu, to God, who is creating them all constantly from nothing. She'en, God has no beginning and has no end. Look, and therefore, Tzorech Heichal, Lahali, Malahasta, therefore you have to have this chamber that conceals over godliness. That's what you have to have. Good? Yes. Okay. One second, what does this go up to? Yeah, I don't know, maybe it doesn't. Okay. <clears throat> the level of atzilut. This is the level of. Oh, here, here it is. Here it is. I'm sorry. Add until should be shtalshlus rabos until you get all of these chaining down from this tremendously high, infinitely spiritual, powerful levels. It comes down to make the heavens and the earth, the physical heavens and the earth, not with the galaxies and all these nebulae and all this stuff. And then you get the world, the physical world. You get the planets and you get the physical world until it comes down to me and you. In this world, we don't see godliness at all. If the upper worlds are concealed from God, and they just get a little tiny ray of godliness, and that makes them scream and yell and go berserk, right? So they only get a little ray, tiny ray of godliness, right? That's what they get. We don't get anything. But when they do get this ray of godliness, they go wild. It, it's just, it's like the cows that are going to, the, to you know, to eat over there. They go berserk. We don't feel anything. We're like the cows that are just laying there in the this and the, right. The, the owner just brings them food. They just lay there all the time. We in this world are totally separate. That's the way God wanted it. By himself. This is the level of Sitra Achra. This whole world is one other side. We, this whole entire world, us included, including our, we are the opposing side. Who is the home side? God. God's there alone, and we're opposing him. The day when you read the Shema, that's why God put the soul in the world. Davka, you read a Latzorah Haliyah, because the soul, that's God's representative in the world. That's the spy. Kadei, La Kafia, Sitra in order to transform the other side by means of Sumira, by means of turning from bad, and by means of this, there is God, there, it, there is spread out the glory of God in all of the worlds. That all of these vessels, etc., won't conceal the light of God. So, like all the religions in the world, right? They talk about going to heaven, going to heaven. Well, heaven is a concealment of God. It's a big trick. It's a trick to get us not like, like the kid who goes to the you know the store. The parents want him to go to the store to buy something, and some guy calls out from the corner from the alley, kid, how would you like you know a candy? You want a son? Uh, want a son? Uh, the, the, a candy, yeah, he shows him a nice lollipop or something like that, or a sugar cane. What do you say about this? Wow, kid says, yeah. No, but I got to go and buy something for my parents. No, you don't have just one minute. Just take the candy for a second. Huh? I got a lot of candies. Want to That's what this world is. We're put in the world for a purpose, and the whole world drives us crazy. It entices us, and it calls us, and it confuses us. What does God want? That we have to make vessels so that God can reveal him. That's what God wants. We don't have to reveal God. God will reveal himself. We just have to make the vessels. We have to do what we can. God will do the rest. By means of doing good. Namely, that's the positive commandments. 248 positive commandments. 248. These are the 248 limbs of the king. It has to be, first of all, turning from bad. First of all, we have to get rid of the sitra achra. 
כמו שכתוב, like it says, לא תתור אחרי לבבכם ואחרי עיניכם, קחו בומר. Let's just take this uh, metaphor that I gave, there's the, the soccer team, right? So there's, <coughs> the, there's the visiting team and there's the home team. There's the home team. The way it is now is that the, the, the home team, that's the sitra achra, that's the concealing God. And we're the visiting team. God sends the soul down into the world. We're visiting here and we're, our job is, is to win. Okay, but in order to win, you have to train first. Training means you don't do what you want. You don't pay attention to getting tired. You don't pay attention to the enemy. You, 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 you train. You don't pay attention to any normal thoughts. You have to think differently, act differently. This, that's called turning from bad. You stop being a normal pedestrian, a normal person. You are now a soccer player. Don't suspect me that I play. I don't even know how to play soccer. Never played in my life. I don't even know how many people are on the team. <clears throat> Nevertheless, I saw it before. The Rebbe had a sikh about it. By means of this, but when we do succeed in getting the the ball and our goal, then then there is the crowd goes wild. The glory of Hashem is spread out in the whole world. Then we can receive by means of doing good. First of all, we have to turn from bad, and then we do good giloy or in so lamata in this physical world by means of the 248 positive commandments of the Torah, which all come from God's wisdom. <clears throat> the mitzvah, so this is revealing God himself. Don't get <clears throat> confused and enticed by going to heaven or by getting the physical pleasures or spiritual pleasures. It's a trick. We have to serve only the creator alone. That's the whole, the, 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 the heavens and the this, that's all like part of sitra. Nafkaba mitzvahs, the commandments, they are the 248 drawing down. This is draws down from God's upper wisdom. That's the commandments. Look, and therefore they're called the limbs of the king. Commercial, like it says, Ivorim, just like a limb. When a Jew does a commandment, what? He draws down into them life, like a limb draws down from the brain. And this is what makes the world a beautiful place when we utilize the commandments with our body to reveal God's life force in the world. We talked about this last time a little bit, like the, the, the oil that comes down, the beard, a member of our own. We'll talk about it more now. We have not yet gotten to what is the land of Israel, what is so important, what does it mean flowing milk and honey, but we're getting to it. The Rebbe, first of all, has to get us to look at the world from God's point of view. Then things become much clearer as we'll talk about more, God willing, tomorrow. Now let's learn the Sicha of the Rebbe. Beautiful Sicha.